channel my name is Cree and today I'm going to be talking about why your hair isn't growing so I know everybody could be at different phases of their hair journey some people may be experiencing setbacks some people may experience thinning others may experience balding well I'm going to be talking about why the reasons why your hair may not be growing or may be stuck in the same place so there are several factors that are important in terms of hair health and I want to start by talking about mind body and spirit when I say that is so important because everything is connected. Whatever you think, whatever you feel can manifest in your body and that can also affect your hair health. To me, uh, just a little bit about my background, I'm an environmentalist so I studied a lot about, you know, the earth, um, the body, diet, and things like that and that everything is connected. So that leads me to reason number one, diet. Diet is so important. I cannot stress it enough. Diet is connected to your body. It's so important that you are receiving the nutrients that help your body flourish as well as your hair grow. Many times people are not eating enough uh, vegetables or fruits and they're eating a lot of fast food so your body is not receiving the nutrients it needs in order for your hair to grow. So what happens when, when you're receiving the vitamins or minerals they go to other areas of your body first and then they go to your hair so it's important that if you're not receiving enough of those minerals in your diet that you can supplement with other vitamins because um, one interesting fact is that the way we produce food now is different compared to how we produce food 50 years ago um, when we look at our soils and how we grow fruits and vegetables our soils are greatly uh, depleted in terms of the mineral content so the plants are not able to absorb of as much minerals that means we are not able to eat as much minerals like our grandparents did back in the day so the important nutrients that we need to be receiving in our body is iron magnesium calcium potassium and biotin too but also there is vitamin a b c d and e and the omega-3 so it's important that you are factoring those things in by fresh fruits and vegetables into your diet so i know a lot of people may eat out and things like that and think that oh well i can eat out and then i could take uh, my vitamin every day and i'll be fine well that's based off the idea of nutritionalism and that's the fact that people think oh i can eat anything i want and then if i take a vitamin i'll get enough well your body is not able to absorb all those nutrients inside of the vitamins so it's better to eat fruits and vegetables to get those nutrients and then use those vitamins or pills to help supplement that so that also leads me to other factors such as people could be consuming too much phytic acid, they could be have DHT in their bodies that's not allowing them to absorb the nutrients as well, and it could also be your gut health. So they say that disease starts in the mouth and I believe it starts in the gut. If your gut health is not in order, it could stop you from again absorbing those nutrients and vitamins that your body needs so it's important that you're taking a probiotic or you're getting um, a source of fermented foods that could be like kombucha or sauerkraut just to help replenish those good bacteria that's in your gut and with that being said drinking water is also important because you know our bodies are made up of mostly of water and make sure you're getting exercise in order to get the oxygen and blood flowing to your body as well as your hair that helps to stimulate the scalp and for me myself I end up adopting a more plant-based diet like flexitarian this just allows me to eat mostly fruits and vegetables but still get other nutrients I can from small amounts of animal products such as bone broths or I still may eat chicken and fish from time to time but with that being said, I talked a lot about diet. I'll probably make a video on that soon. Let's get into the next step, which is environmental factors. Environmental factors are important because they may be all around us and we may not know how it affects our body and our hair. Some examples include hard water, radiation, or chemicals. Hard water is basically when the water coming out of your faucet has a high mineral content. And when we bathe or wash our hair, these minerals build up along the hair shaft or our skin and then it stops our products from working or penetrating to give us moisture. So in order to combat this problem, you should put a um, water filter on your water system in your house. Um, the next thing is radiation. A lot of people are sensitive to radiation and they don't even know it. Radiation could be come from devices, technology, power plants, power towers, Wi-Fi uh, stations. Um, a lot of these things have electromagnetic radiation that 
our body absorbs and it can cause disease and disruptions and it can even cause hair loss so it's important to be aware of these things so we can limit our exposure and the next thing is chemicals a lot of things have chemicals in it including things like our detergent we wash our clothes in it we wash our hair bonnets in it so just think about you washing your hair bonnet and you put it on your hair. Detergents are known to be very toxic to the skin and the lungs and cause breathing problems and it can cause rashes. So if you put a bonnet on your hair, your hair can, your scalp can have a rash on it as well and it cause hair loss. So yeah, we need to think about that and make more choices maybe that are less toxic. And um, when you think about it, certain material can cause damage to our hair as well. For example, if we have cotton or wool and we're wearing that clothing and the nape of our hair rubs against it, next thing you know, you have breakage on your nape area or the ends of your hair. So environmental factors are all around us and they could affect us and we should be more aware of that. By the way, that's why it's important to find healthier alternative to the chemicals and the products that we use like detergent. You may find one that's not scented or a baby product or something that's more gentler on your skin and your hair so that um, it doesn't harm your body in any way. Um, the next thing is the air and water quality. It's important that you are breathing in, you know, purified air and purified water because again, that has a direct correlation with your health and your hair. And so that leads me to the next reason why your hair may not be growing, which is stress. Okay, let's talk about stress. Why stress can um, affect hair growth? Well, we all know that emotions are tied to the body. It's the whole thing about mind, body, spirit. So, emotions can manifest in your body. If you are stressing, if you're in a stressful job, a relationship, or situation, it is better to cut it off because it can negatively affect your health. So I had this friend who was in a relationship and she was stressing so bad that it caused her to have bald spots forming in her hair. And as soon as she cut that relationship off, guess what? The symptoms reversed. Her hair started growing back and she was actually doing a lot better. So that just shows you that emotions are directly related to the body and it can manifest. So like I said, it's not worth it to have any type of stress in your life. Let it go, sis. Let it go. And um, another resource for you guys, if you want to learn more about how the emotions are connected to the body, you should check out this book by Louise Hay. It's called You Can Heal Your Life. And in the book, it basically lists the body and the emotion that it's connected to. For example, if you um, ha are having a sore throat, usually it's something stuck in your throat that you're not saying. Hands. Um, if your hand hurts, it's usually an idea that you're not grasping. Um, legs, if you have problems in your legs, that means you have problems moving forward in life. Lungs means you're not breathing in life fully. Um, heart attack, you're not receiving enough love. Stomach issues means you're not digesting ideas well. Knees and joints, I have a good story about that. When I was growing up and my mom would tell me to do something and I'd be like, huh, like I was kind of giving her a little bit of attitude about doing it. I would usually go and hit my knee or my elbow shortly after that. And then she'd be like, see, see, that's why you hit your knee and your elbow because you're unbending in your thinking. If you would have just did what I told you to do, I was like, you know what? <laughs> but she was right. So <laughs> it's just so important to like make sure you're processing your emotions or whatever this is bothering you because when you can release that emotion, it will release the disease from your body or the dis-ease from your body. So with that being said, that leads me to the next reason why your hair may not be growing, which is number four. You're wearing your hair in afros too much. Okay, um, one more thing guys, so about the emotions that are linked to our body and disease and stuff, it's so important that we um, are doing positive self-talk and we are thinking positive thoughts. Whatever you think, you will become. Whatever you think, you are. So make sure, you know, you are putting positive things out there. And you could be speaking positivity on your hair too, on your body. And watch you start to see results. But anyway, 
I just want to put that out there because it was just on my mind but the next step number four is wearing your hair out in afros if you wear your hair out in afros too much you can get a lot of tangling you can get split in single strand knots your hair can be matted and that stuff is hard to detangle and it can cause a lot of hair loss and breakage so it's very important instead of wearing your hair out all the time like in twist outs braid outs curly styles that you implement more protective styles me I know it seems like it's the pot calling the kettle black, but <laughs> usually I don't really wear my hair out in afros too often. If I do, it's usually when I'm transitioning from one style into another. Like I just had my hair in twist all week, so I'm taking this down and I'm about to wash it. And then I'm going to probably do another protective style. And, and this helps to minimize breakage and it preserves your length. So try not to wear your hair out too often. If you do, maybe fluctuate. Maybe you can wear like that for this month and then next month wear a protective style. That leads me to the next reason why your hair may not be growing is number five. And that could be wearing weaves or wigs. Okay, please do not beat me up because I'm talking from my own experience. Sometimes I like to change my hair up and I can wear a protective style using weave and me I like to use box braids. I remember that when I put the box braids in I have braided my hair too tight and that's not just with weave styles it's with regular hairstyles as well but that particular time when I was using a weave for the box braids I braided too tight along the front my hair started getting aggravated my scalp I was getting those little bumps you can see and then I was noticing it was pulling and some of my hair was being ripped out so I ended up taking down that style immediately and I ended up loosening it up and putting it back in I still wore that style out for the month but after that I took it out and I just wore my hair natural so I feel like if you're going to wear weaves and wigs make sure it's not pulling on your scalp too much make sure you can uh switch it up maybe one month of a weave or a wig and then next month you can wear your hair out because I also noticed that sometimes when people wear wigs um, your hair may not get enough air or circulation and if you glue it on you can cause a lot of moisture between the wig and your scalp and this can allow fungus, yeast and bacteria to grow and that can cause hair loss as well. So it's just so important that we're just paying attention to the different things we're putting on our hair and try to minimize that. That leads me to the next reason why your hair may not be growing, number six, which is too much manipulation. Too much manipulation can cause your hair to break off, people. That's why I say that less is more. Um, just leave your hair alone and allow it to do its thing. I was just talking about protective styles. If you put your hair in a protective style and leave it alone, most likely you'll see more growth with your hair. So with that being said, um, all those people who plan their hair, that used to be me. I used to always be planning it and just leave it alone let your hair do its thing styling your hair every week may not be the best because again you're manipulating it, you're planning it, you're combing it out it's just causing more stress along the hair which can weaken it so if you do a long-term protective style like a month that would be better suited for your hair than styling it every week and that is what I tend to do and that leads me to the next reason which is number seven and that's not using the right products not using the right products is something that I have gone through myself as well. When it comes to using the right products, it's so important. I remember with the whole coconut oil rave, everybody was running out to get coconut oil. I wanted to see what the hype was about it. I got it. When I say coconut oil almost made your girl go bald, for real, because oh, it was so drying. I remember putting it on my hair and like five seconds later my hair was dry as heck man and it would just be breaking off as i started using it for like over the course of the uh, next several months and i'm i don't know what possessed me to keep using it but i did but that's why it's just so important for you to identify what's going wrong and, and what your hair likes and what it doesn't like so that you can find products that are really suited for you once i find the shea moisture jamaican black castor oil line i see that it really nourished my hair it moisturized it it made my hair feel so soft i was like okay this is the the products for me so uh, make sure you're looking at the ingredients if it has sulfites if the computer the computer if the shampoo is too drying 
that may not necessarily be for you especially if you have type 4 hair so just make sure you're looking at the ingredient list and see what your hair likes and you'll know because your hair respond nicely to it like i say it'll be more manageable and softer in the end and that leads me to the last reason which is using too much heat your girl used to use too much heat as well especially in the beginning of my hair journey I was flat ironing it. Oof! I was flat ironing my hair so much it was terrible. I remember when I um my edges along this side was about an inch long because that's how much I fried it off. <laughs> so it's important that you are uh, paying attention and maybe if you want to flat iron your hair, flat iron it maybe twice a year. Me, I tend to do it once a year, but the last few years I kind of fell off, but this year I wanted to do it, which it was fine. I made sure I used the heat protectant, and um, I only passed the flat iron through my hair like two times. I wore that style for like a couple of weeks, and after that, that's it. I went back to wear my hair natural again. So if you're going to use it, just monitor it. And blow dryer, you know me, I do most of my styles on blow dry hair. I make sure I put it on a medium setting. On the medium setting, I don't really see any damage, so it works great for me. My hair is stretched, so I can do my protective styles, and all is well. Okay, guys, so these were the eight reasons why your hair may not be growing. I hope you found some value out of it. If you could relate, then feel free to comment down below your ideas or your thoughts about it. Um, I just wanted to share the information that I learned and adapted in my journey with you guys, so hopefully it helps. And I thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, Feel free to hit the like button and subscribe because I want to have more videos coming soon. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.